All right. Welcome to the Justin McDonald Show. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We've switched things up. We used to be here on Friday nights at 9, but now we are here on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. live. And then, uh, of course, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. But we appreciate you joining us. And, of course, remember the new time, and you can join us whenever you'd like right here on TalkCast PDX. And we're actually broadcasting across multiple platforms right now. So we're on our Facebook Live we're also on Twitch, YouTube, and on Twitter and Periscope. So it's always uh, easy to reach us and catch the show whenever you'd like. But we do want you to go to TalkCastPDX.com very much so. We were going to have a couple of guests today, but we are minus one guest. Uh, but that does not mean nothing because we have a great guest with us here on the Justin McDonald Show for this Wednesday. And we have Rhea Gonzalez with us uh, right now from... Dutch Valley Farms. How are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing excellent. And uh, this is the first time that you've been on this show. Uh, have you been yes. on other podcasts before? You know, I always say no, but you caught me on the perfect day. <laughs> so oh, really? I said, yeah, I always turn them down. I just, I don't know. I've just always said no and decided yours was the first one I should say yes to. Why say no when it feels so good to say yes? Come on. I know. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I've been asked a few times by a few people, but I've just always just kind of said no. Well, I'm glad you could join us. Um, where are you at right now? Are you uh, in the city or are you out of the city of Portland? I live out in Sandy, so I'm hmm. a little bit outside of Portland. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, it's good to get outside the town uh, a little bit. I live way out Banks area. You know, I live out yeah. the other one, so it is nice to get out that uh, out and get away from the city when you're not having to be here all the time. So, it is, so especially if you're driving all the time, it's really right, nice. To live right? outside. Right. And you probably do a lot of driving, right? I do. Yeah. Well, lot. let's talk a little bit about what you do um, and who you do it for. Tell me what you do for Dutch Valley Farms. So for Dutch Valley Farms and Permaculture Solutions, I'm the sales manager for both brands. So our Dutch Valley Farms obviously is a flower brand. We're a tier one um, in Estacada. And then Permaculture Solutions is our processor license. And we make bubble hash and hash rosin. And that's out in Hillsboro. So I'm back and forth from the two quite a lot. Some of my favorite stuff you're talking about there. Um, <laughs> how long have you worked for Dutch Valley? Um, a little bit over two years for Dutch Valley. Um, it's been probably, I've worked in cannabis before it was legal when it was medical back in Arizona. So I've had hmm. a few different jobs in cannabis, but I've really enjoyed my two years here so far. How is the scene different in Arizona compared to Oregon? I mean, as far um, as the medical, I know they were just medical then. I think they're legal uh, now. Right yeah, they just turned legal. It is a 180 degree difference, just the... The culture, the dispensary type, the ownership type, it's very big business there, big money there. And that's, it's been, it's been interesting. Definitely. That's a big reason I left. I just felt like the industry was really stagnant there. And here I feel like there's more of an emphasis on the medicine being clean, it right. getting a patient and just access. And there it's, it's a little bit more, it's always been kind of wreck, even though it's medical, it's been treated like wreck the whole time. In Arizona, when it comes to the medical side of things, um, what are what is one key difference, let's say, compared to the Oregon medical scene? I mean, uh, that you could say that stands out in your mind. Um, definitely, they just implemented testing there after ten years, so the program has been alive since two thousand ten, and they just implemented testing. So that's wow. a huge, yeah, that's huge, a huge difference for to me. me that's, that's not really cool. That's yeah, that's crazy. Since it is a medical uh, program, you would think testing would want to be one of the things that's on the top of the list. Yeah, um, it's still a problem. They still a lot of dispensaries don't want to test. They're only testing for potency because they don't like the results they're getting. And it's it's kind of unfortunate. It's definitely a different game. Yeah, lab shopping is uh, a game that's played in Portland or in Oregon in general as well. Um, and I see it around the country also. But lab shopping, is, I think, is a problem. Uh, that consistency yes. between labs, I think, can be a problem as well. Some labs are doing a great job. Some labs are just for hire. Yeah, we've used a few labs, too. We're really happy with Chem History. We get consistent results, and they're, they've they been the easiest lab with us to work for so far. So we're really happy with them. So is Dutch Valley like fully integrated? Do they have shops and, and the brands? and We don't curious? have a dispensary. We just have the producer and the processor license. Um, this next year, though, we're 
hopefully going to be looking to acquire another producer license so Great. we can yeah we can supply more people it's been pretty tight with us being a tier one we're pretty limited on how many stores we can work with but i was just going to ask section. you about that um what tier you were um, yeah tier one so have you found over the last year since the cannabis industry has been thriving during the pandemic <clears throat> excuse me have you found that uh sales have gone up are they steady or uh, are they going in spurts? Um, what what kind of trends have you seen as far as the sale of flour? It's been definitely up. Price points been up. Just demand's been up. We've this past year we really haven't been able to take on a lot of new stores because we've worked with a lot of our stores since we first started selling into into Rec. So mm -hmm. we barely really started being able to add new stores on the past like three months. Um, but we've it's been busy for us. We've had a huge wait list the entire year and. We've just, it's been a whole year of us not being able to keep up with the demand just with how much flour we produce, but right. we just doubled our harvest this past two harvests. So we're kind of taking care of that problem. Yeah. Um, doubling the harvest, man, that's a, uh, that's a big step. That's a lot yeah. of work. That's a lot of work, yeah, that, a lot of time, a lot of money. Uh, it's kind of a gamble, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. We are, we have a great owner. He really put a lot of time into making sure that we could slowly put these steps together over 2020. So by the time 2021 came around, we'd have double the weight and we already in the first part of 2021, it's happened. So it's, it's really nice to see all the plans we've laid over the last year really finally come to be for us. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, when, the, when the plan comes together, it's always feels excellent uh, in that situation. Uh, when yeah. Dutch Valley Farms, so when was Dutch Valley Farms founded? Can you tell so, me? That? Um, it was back in the medical days. We had a small medical farm about seven years ago and they just, you know, kind of stayed under the radar medical, nothing crazy. And then we became rec about three years ago, a little bit before I came on actually like two and a half years. Um, and so they were, they had just kind of the ownership doing some of the sales before I came on. And so we're, we're pretty new, like into the rec scene. We're pretty new, but we, we have great relationships with our shops and we have a, we try to put our brand out there as much as possible. I feel like we have a strong brand game. We're really into swag, marketing, websites, yeah, hat, and stuff. Yeah, hat you have Thank on. You. Completely I'll get cool. you one. Yeah, I'm I'm like a hat freak. I got tons of hats. It's because I'm going bald, so I just wear <laughs> lots of hats now. Actually, I, I when I noticed uh, when I was younger and I noticed I was starting to thin in my hair, I just started shaving it, cutting it short because <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be that comb over guy. That's not going to yeah. happen. I'm not going to be that guy out somewhere. My hair is whipping in the wind, you know, and, uh, you know, with the Trump haircut type of situation. <laughs> not going to be me. Uh, I'm glad when, you went the other way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm glad I did too. Uh, Dutch Valley Farms, how many shops currently are you guys in in the Oregon market? So it kind of ranges from like 20 to 30. But in the last month, I've brought five new shops off the wait list. Oh, so, wow. yeah, we're not in a huge amount of shops like. We, we've always kept the batches really small. We harvest every two weeks though, so we don't go long stretches without flour. So it's small batches pretty consistently and really kept us in the market, even though we're you know a smaller smaller company. Yeah, that's my favorite. I like craft uh, cannabis. I, I'm not a big fan of the you know the huge huge yeah. gigantic corporate farm type situations. I prefer the craft uh, cannabis. Same. Or everything. So um, now when it comes to selling material, do you guys do a fair amount of like concentrates, uh, RSO, things like that? Uh, do you, I mean, are you selling to those people making those things? No, everything goes straight to our processor license. So it goes into the bubble hash and the hash raws. And we, we've worked with a few companies before we got the producer license back online, but everything mm -hmm. just goes straight to them from us. Well, Permaculture Solutions yeah. is one of the yeah. finest, uh, you know, around. Uh, I dabbled myself with it many, many times. And actually, uh, uh, I'll tell this story real quick. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I was at Oregon's Finest for a while. And at one point in time, I was, uh, you know, doing new vendor intake and getting samples a lot and stuff. And Permaculture Solutions had some really nice hash and had mm -hmm. had a couple. And uh, I just loved the dog walker. Uh, and it was fantastic. And I had put one in the freezer and forgot that it was there. And I shit you not. <laughs> it was just like about six months ago. I'm digging through the freezer and I find this uh, uh, bubble hash. 
dog walker permaculture solution <laughs> i'm like hell yeah i, I so let it kind of get warm a little bit and man it did not lose an inch oh and good it was yeah so we took good. some time off we took like a year and a half off just to get a new facility built going through yeah. all the licensing and stuff but we've been back for a little bit and it's going pretty good yeah, it's a process, uh, but uh, it was always just some of the finest around and good stuff. Um, oh, thank you. I just, I'll, I was, I'll pass you know, it on. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny how I just found this one little half gram or a gram or whatever uh, in my freezer <laughs> behind, <laughs> behind some pork chops that I put in there or something a long time ago. It was kind of funny. It's a um, nice surprise. Uh, when, it come, when you're out and about, um, let me ask you this because I don't get to talk to a lot of people who are out schlepping the product a lot. You know, I talk mm -hmm. to people who uh, either own the business or, you know, uh, one of those types of situations. But I don't get to talk to folks who are out there really slinging the hash, if you will. Um, Literally. Daily basis, right. Uh, <laughs> what are the... What are the receptions that are you're getting when you get, go to new clients? Is it, oh, you know, I got already got too much product or, geez, just another weed and just another cultivar for me to look at and smell? I mean, do you feel Sorry. like, you, you feel like uh, you get any blowback? Hi, doggy. <laughs> we little love six you. month old puppy. He's a little crazy. Um, I've seen you know, him on your Instagram. He's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's I love him. Um, but you know, we've we're pretty lucky. You know, we we've kind of leveraged all the relationships we had with Dutch Valley with the permaculture stuff coming back online. So the majority of our stores carry it. We've got a lot of new stores. Um, I mean, it I, I see that happening to like other people, and I feel like we're super lucky that we have people reaching out to us for it and we're selling through stuff like for bubble hash i have a wait list rosin's getting close to that wow. so i mean we haven't really had a lot of pushback i mean a lot of people remember the brand from a few years ago and we've really you know we gave a lot of samples out put a lot of swag in the market for them so we didn't really have a lot of resistance thank goodness but i, I like to think also you know like the relationships we already have really helps make that smooth for us yeah, I mean that's uh, that's good when you can bring uh, you know close down a product and bring it back like that. That yeah. that shows brand awareness, and you know you put some hustle in before you know you had to shut it down. I mean the same thing, uh, same thing uh, you know for for my show and um, on you know other shows that I know they closed down for like a year. You know they stopped doing their podcasts, they stopped doing their this and that, and now everybody's back in the saddle. They're just like you know what. Uh, I had to take time off, take care of the family, do this and do that and focus on surviving uh, through the pandemic. Um, you know, I could have done a podcast during that time, but I don't think it would have been worthy for my family. You know, and I need that. Yeah, know, that makes sense. Um, it's been an interesting also, year. People, it's, it's, it's been the time to take care of yourself, you know, and then you can, the more you're well, the more you can help take care of others around you. I think when there's a crappy year like 2020 and it just still feels like the world's falling apart, um, it, it's good in the sense is that it helps people learn to self-reflect and look deep in there a little bit and make sure everything's okay, you know? Yeah. <laughs> make sure everything's okay. And I think cannabis helps that a little bit. Uh, I think it would have been a lot harder of a year for a lot of people without cannabis. You know, as being deemed essential uh, in that nature – for all of this happening, um, you know, is it, it's got to feel scary out there when you're out on the front lines. I mean, because you still have to supply the product for the dispensaries that are deemed essential and they're going to run out uh, pretty quickly if you don't yeah. show up with your orders. So how, how did you deal with that? Was it, did you start getting overwhelmed with orders because people were afraid they were going to run out? Uh, or what, what was the atmosphere like? I mean, yes and no on the getting overwhelmed. We had like a, it seemed like a massive influx of new stores reaching out that we'd never, you know, talked to before. And we really kind of waitlisted them, unfortunately, but they're the ones that are coming off now. But it was, it was a little, you know, scary at first because, you know, it's really getting hyped up, you know, in, in the media in the beginning of the pandemic. So we were really cautious about who we we're around. I mean, we, we have a small team at the farm anyway, so we were pretty good as far as like distancing there. And I just made sure when I was out on the road, just sanitizer, wash my hands, masks, a good mask, not like, you know, a cloth mask, a good mask. And just, you know, kind of keeping my distance. And that's, I've, you know, been pretty lucky thus far. And 
And it's, it's pretty easy. Everyone wants the same thing. You know, nobody wants to have an interaction and come home sick and take it home, you know, so everybody's been really good about it at all of our stores, the farm. It's been, it's been really easy. You know, like our, our yeah. owners give us everything we need to make it work. You know, we have sanitizer in every room, dispensers, hand washing stations, plenty of room. So we've, it's been, you know, not the hardest adjustment. It's not fun, you know, but it's doable. And, you know, it's good though that your ownership gets it. You know, they get it. They're promoting the safety. They're not treating it like, oh, this is another pain in the ass, you know, that I got to deal with. Yeah. It's part of what has to happen. And so you might as well not complain about it or anything like that. Just get her done. And Yeah, exactly. The first, when it first started, I was getting boatloads of masks at my house. My boss was just sending like every mask. He's like, just here's all of them. Here, like, here's okay. the you know, we were safe at least. <laughs> Um, so what are the goals? What are your goals for 2021? What is uh, some of the goals Dutch Valley Farms has set for itself and goals that you've set for yourself, um, being, a, uh, out there on the front lines, basically getting the product to market. Um, I mean, what, our, you, know, you know, like as a farm, what is the goal that Dutch Valley Farms has kind of set for themselves? Our goal is, um, just to get really another license, another property so we can get a tier two and really touch those stores that we haven't been able to. That's been the goal for a lot of 2020. We kind of focus more on the existing grow this year. And this next year is going to be making sure everything goes through for that. And we can start getting, you know, larger amounts out to the market, put some greenhouses up, supply permaculture a little easier. It's it's really been the goal for all of us. So we've just kind of been keeping our heads down, all working towards it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the biggest goal for us. You know, I, I feel like we'll get there because we when we have goals, like we, we always meet them, you know, we're really good. The whole team's really good about making sure we can meet those. Yeah. I mean, like personally, I just, I, I'm really excited that we have more flour to put into the market, you know, just yeah. to bring those new stores on. Like I'm, I'm a hunter, you know, so it's like the kill when you get a new store and I haven't really been able to have that for a while. So it's really nice now that I can go out and like bring new people in. It's, it's always fun. And we, we treat our stores really well. So it's, it's really, I don't know. I love getting new stores. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it, it's a victory, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I scored a, uh, another victory, and they like our weed, and I told them about our weed, and yeah, <laughs> now they sell our weed. Yay! Yeah, uh, sell it fast. <laughs> so what's uh what's your top seller right now of all your cultivars that you have? What is your top like? What is people they have to have it? They want it. They can't stand it. They gotta have it. So, oh man, we have quite a few, but like right now it, it'd be our GMO. It always tests extremely well. Like this last batch was 32 THC, 39 total, 3.18 on Terps. So and what it's always that? been um, what chem lab? history. Chem history. Okay. Yeah. And we've, we've tested it like multiple times because we're like, let's, let's make sure this is real, you know? So oh, we've yeah. done it before, but it, it always tests, you know, very high, which it's not everything, but we make sure the terpenes, yeah. you know, we ter terp test everything, mm -hmm. but it's GMO is always our best seller. It's our highest price point. Um, it's the one people want, you know, even if they, I've had a few people lately, they bought it from other farms and they, they like ours, you know, so it makes you feel good. So now that we're doing that right. But we, we have quite a few things that, you know, people really like. We have OG 18. Um, we're hopefully going to bring back J1 next year. That was like a big one for us when we yeah. started. And it's kind of what we were known for for a while. Yeah, J1. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about like the new stuff we have coming up. We have banana pudding tang coming. We just took it down last week. I so I'm excited about it. that one. Everybody's into the banana pudding tang. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm not putting them try it. I'm not knocking it. Uh, I've just never been a banana fan, you know, like strains uh, or mm -hmm. uh, that were banana based if you will uh yeah never got into it i tried i'm like that i'm like that it's, with orange I, I don't really care for like a lot of the orange strains banana was the pumpkin spice of weed for me i, mean, I was like come <laughs> on but i granted i i not too long ago someone i did get some um from somebody else and i did i didn't dislike it so that was good because it took me a long way time to get off the banana you know yeah Poo poo in the banana, but I, um, I like it. It's one of the only fruit ones I like. Like I'm, I mostly like gas. But if there's a fruit one, like yeah. I do like banana. But I'm, I'm also really picky about like any, any kind of fruit. I've been on the strain. hunt for, some, for. I've been on the hunt for some really good dog walker because I like the stanky, stinky. Just it's 
stinks. <laughs> That's what I yeah, want. Yeah, here the better, like armpits. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find. So Fresh Farms had some really nice dog walker for a while, but I haven't seen any for a while. And I, every time I find it, though, I buy it because I, I yeah, know, it's like the best head weed for me. Um, I, I feel like I haven't seen that one for a while either. Yeah, it's kind of. I do. Of, I like that one a lot too. It's one of those things. And then uh, what was the one recently? Fatso. I've been smoking a lot of Fatso. Fatso. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, it kind of puts me down after a while. I gotta take a break. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love it when it, something can put me down. And when is the banana pudding team coming again? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go off my we, baby banana. Oh, we're good. You, we just took it down last week, so it's gonna hang for a little bit. It's gonna dry, go into testing, trimming, and everything. So I'd say like sometime next month. Okay. It'll well, be, yeah, yeah, like yeah, sometime next month we'll have that. We we have a lot of stuff this next year. Last year we experimented a lot. We just threw a lot of experimental strains in there to see what we liked, what we didn't like. We still have a lot to work through, but we've, you know, isolated. It's like a core number of strains that we always want to run. And gotcha. we, yeah, we have a lot, a lot going on. I'm excited about this next year for us. Well, I was glad that you could uh, take some time out and uh, come on uh, the Justin McDonald show. You know, I, this show for me, I always try to talk like cannabis and stuff going on um, in the industry and, uh, you know, food and all the other great stuff that Portland has to offer and just mm -hmm. talk to interesting people in the, in the business. And um, so I was glad that uh, you were able to come on this week. Uh, like oh, I said, thanks for asking me. I don't get to talk to many people, like I said, that are out there on the front lines slinging the weed. Most of them are checking on payroll or sitting in somewhere on an island talking to me on a phone, you know? So it's very nice and very uh, nice change of pace to have. Uh, you oh, on. Thank you. Thank you. I love talking to people out there. I like the face to face. It's, it's, I don't know if I could sit at the desk all day. Yeah. When we get, uh, at some point we'll have to have you in the studio. We're going to do round tables here for sure. So yeah, definitely. I'll bring some flour and some, some hash rods and buy. Yeah, that, that's great. We were just talking about if we could smoke in our building <laughs> or not. Can you? <laughs> we can't smoke flour, but we can do dabs and use pens. Yeah, so, I got the dabs then. So <laughs> I'll bring those. Uh, there's a thing I like to call the walk around the block. Uh, you know, if we need some flour that bad. My okay. favorite move. <laughs> <laughs> Safety <laughs> meeting really quick. So yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I thank you so much for, for coming on the show and we'll stay in touch and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get you on again uh, sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Thank All right. you, everyone. Have All a right. good one. <laughs> Bye. All right, folks. Uh, Ria Gonzalez right here on the Justin.